So hello again. Tonight it's raining. You might be able to hear the drops outside of the rain. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to talk to you tonight about something I've been thinking a lot about recently, and it's um, the future of the visual artist and how it could go the same way as the as the sound artist or the, the musician, if you want to use a normal word for it. Um, so basically, this is um, the Altamira cave in Spain, northern Spain. And these are bison creatures, and they're actually aurochs. So in um, Europe at that time, they had aurochs, and I think they were hunted to extinction. And also the Ice Age had a bit to do with it as well. So this is the cave, but actually this is not the cave, this is a replica of the cave. So people even making replicas of of um, prehistoric art. Um, I'm not sure when this replica was made, but it was made probably before 3D scanning, you know, perhaps 20 years ago. It was made because um, the Spanish authorities were worried that if you breathed on the wall too many people breathing with the co2 it would uh, mess up the paintings so they made a replica um, and this is about what i'm going to talk about so this is um if any of you were around around about my age um, which is late 30s then you might remember this and this is napster this is from the late 90s and napster suddenly came onto our internets at that time when the internet was very, very kind of rubbish and dial up. And um, with this, many people downloaded songs and they downloaded it for free. Um, it was a peer to peer network. It wasn't coming from the actual artists. The artists would not get any money for it. It was just peer to peer copying music, getting the music for free. And that caused a big thing in the music industry, obviously, because at the time, you know, music labels didn't think about digi digi digital downloads of music. So they were taken by shock. It was a big crisis and they had to, everything had to get blown up and put back together in the music industry. So that symbol will always be in one's mind. You know, if you're from, um, if you remember it, then that's always ingrained in your mind. And then again, here's the old atom bomb. Just looking at, you know, that as an effect, you know, a big explosion like that. And how that happens in the music industry. And I actually believe that it's going to happen in the visual industry. And if it's kind of happening already as well, with the fact that artists are selling on their own shops, like I sell on my own shop, I don't need a gallery to sell my work, we don't need galleries to sell our work, we can rent pop-up shops, we can market online, so that's changed, but then there's much, much bigger changing, and that's about copy, copying or duplicating art, so that used to be the domain of the um, the forger, you know, the, the little forger, you know, in his little dark room, making a copy of the Mona Lisa and then selling it to some underhand millionaire or something. Um, but now copying art, you know, it's um, the technologies are there to make copies not too, in a not too difficult way. So the first way we copy is 2D. So if you take a photograph of something in a gallery, um, you can get a fairly good copy of it. Um, and if it's skew if like if the perspective is messed up or if it has a perspective we can use 2d editing tools to make it flat um so so really we can we can get fairly decent prints that look kind of okay small prints and as pho photography advances still further i'm sure in about five years or ten years we'll be able to use a fairly cheap camera um, an SLR or even a digital, just a digital camera, not a digital SLR, and we can take a photograph of a picture on a the wall, then we can mess around with the distortion, mess around with the brightness contrast, and then make a nice print of it. And this is how artists make their Jicoli prints. All they do is that they get the painting and they put it in a, well, they usually put it in a, in a good lighting setup and take a photograph of it. So it's not much different to 
to doing it under less controlled conditions. So once the software is there to make the picture as good as a studio photograph, then there's no difference, in my opinion, between the two. So that's something you have to ask yourself if you are an artist and you're making prints. And as you can see, here's um, a print that I have, Montreal Biosphere. You can see the perspective on that. If I were to take it to a 3D program, then I could sort out the perspective, make it flat, um, cut out the edges here, crop the edges, and, and basically print that. That's not actually a very, that's kind of a grainy photograph, but you can see that anyway. And then once more on top of that, we're for duplicating 2D art. We can duplicate 3D, we, not 3D, we can duplicate paintings. Now there's an actual 3D printer that will spray the paint in exactly the same way as um, the original. So that that is even more of a bombshell for painters because it's going to duplicate something again. So where does that leave the artist? You know, where, do, do the artist copyright their, their, their style rather than their products? So what happens? You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, and then here's a 3D scan of, um, it's called the Stanford Dragon. And this was done a while ago with Stanford University. And, um, you know, it's from a sort of sculpt uh, sculpture antique. And they managed to capture it and scan it in to, um, to 3D graphics. Um, and you might be thinking, yeah, but that just only takes it into 3D graphics. But now with things like 3D printers, we can get some artwork like a sculpture or a figurine um, just from foot, even cameras now. And then we can print it out 3D so we can duplicate it again. Um, talking about cameras, so this is a very simple way you can get um, a 3D object. So this was for my book, How to Design Imaginary Cities, How to Create an Imaginary City. And um, I was making a shape in 3D because I wanted to make this tower in the ocean that was like an ocean city. And I was really not happy with making it in um, 3D graphics. Um, so I decided to get some clay and make it in reality. Because when you make something in reality, the proportions are kind of um, more real. Um, but at the same time, we can get that into 3D by using a program called 123D Catch. So I'd really recommend you checking it out. It's a free program by Autodesk. And what you do is you take a photograph at one angle, then another angle. You do about, I can't really remember now, 30 to 60 shots. You upload the photographs to the computer and it'll make a basic 3D model for you. And that's a really interesting thing. But that's a, that, that technology is quite low and it can mess up, but it's only going to get better and better. So in the future, you'll probably be able to do a film and then get a 3D object just from your film on your iPhone. That's what I believe. The next five years, I'm sure. No more than that. And then, as you can see, that's the original clay image. And then once I got it in to the 3D, um, the 3D graphics program I was using Blender, then this shape was developed from the rough shape that came in. So that that's not that shape. That shape came in as a really messed up 3D mesh. And then I kind of made a clean model around it, basically. So that's, um, that's how you can work doing that. And then then again you could output it as a 3d print so let's take it back to the original cave painting so um so now we can um we can get arts we can we can get the 2d arts um we can adjust it with photography then make a good print of it we can do a 3d print um of actually a painting there's technology that allows us to do that although it's very expensive at the moment but then again, you know, the five or ten years thing. And then um, we can also get actual scans of 3D sculptures. So I'm just asking you, where does that leave you as an artist? Are you worried? Do you think this will not happen? And, um, and what will you do? So check out my blog post as well. If you're reading this just from YouTube, um, go to my blog. And um, yeah, give some comments. And um, my view is that artists, as I say in the blog entry, the artists will have to offer more. And in the past, the greatest artists have offered more anyway. If you look at all the famous artists, they were kind of a brand. Um, people bought into their art as to get a piece of this the, the artist's genius. It wasn't just a run-of-the-mill, 
you know, making an image than selling it, they, they, they offered more. So thanks very much. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, do so. I've got loads of tutorials. I've just bought a really good um, new microphone. I'm waiting for in the post it's um, a blue snowball so and I've also bought a really good webcam so I'm gonna get gonna start doing some really cool stuff with my screencasts in um, later this month December and for the new year so watch out for that as well anyway um, thanks very much and any comments and questions just fire away and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible anyway I'm gonna go to sleep now and the weather's rubbish so <laughs> goodbye for now hopefully it'll be sunny one day here